Hello friends, welcome back to this channel. So in the previous session, we saw how to create I am user, and then we saw how to use I am roles. Now in this session, we are going to discuss about RDS. So first of all RDS stands for Relational Database Services. It is a managed database solution that Amazon provides. It provides a lots of advantages, like you can easily set up replication, that means high availability, you can easily choose to have two instances that replicate each other. You also have automated snapshot. So you can just take a snapshot, which is a backup of your database. And we have the automated security updates. You just give a time frame where Amazon can do security updates during the night, and then it will automatically upgrade your instance in that time. We also have easy instance placement for vertical scaling. You can see at any point in time, I want to have twice the amount of memory twice the amount of CPU, and Amazon will replace your instance for you, with a downtime of just a few minutes. The support database in AWS are, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL, and Oracle. The steps that you have to take to create an RDS instance are, you have to create a subnet group, which allows you to specify in what subnets, the VPC subnets, the database will be in, for instance EU West 1A and EU West 1B can be subnets you want your RDS instance in. So we also have to create a parameter group. This allows you to specify parameters to change settings in the database. We also create a security group that allows incoming traffic to the RDS instance. If you use MariaDB port 3306, then you can say, my instance needs access to this RDS instance and only this instance will be able to access your database. And then, we create the RDS instance itself. So first, let's have a look at parameter group, it is the easiest one. Let's say that we want to launch a MariaDB. Then, we create an OSDB parameter group, called MariaDB parameters. We give the name, it's a family like MariaDB and then a version. A ND we also give it a description. And then you can add parameters. Those parameters go into the configuration file of the instance itself. You don't have shell access to those instances. So, this is the only way to make changes to the settings of a database. Then, we specify the subnet. Here is an AWS DB subnet group, with a name, and a description. And we have the subnet's IDs. Here we just specify our multiple subnets, that the RDS should be running in. This subnet group specifies that RDS will be put in the private subnets. You can see AWS subnet main private 1, and main private 2. When we launch a RDS instance we can still choose which one we prefer. The RDS will only be accessible from other instances within the same subnet, not from the internet. If you want to make it accessible from the office or from your home, then you need to choose the public one, because only then it will get a public IP address. The RDS instance will also be placed either in private 1, or private 2, not in the private 3 subnet. We didn't add private 3, so it will never be placed in private 3. Now when you enable high availability, you will have an instance in both subnets. Then, the security group. I already explained this earlier. So, what's important here is the ingress rule, because it allows all traffic. Ingress rule says from port 3306, to port 3306, protocol, TCP IP. And then, instead of saying CIDR block, instead of saying these IP range should have access, we can also specify another security group. So, let's say that we launch example instance with example security group, then, the only thing that we have to do is that, we have to refer here to this other security group, the group that is linked with this instance, and then this instance will have access to the database, so this is just another way of applying security groups, you don't have to always supply IP ranges. You can also supply another security group, and it's quite easy to. And then finally, we specify the RDS resource. So there's quite a lot of settings, that we have to specify. Let's start from the top. Allocated storage 100 GB of storage. It's recommended to use at least 100 GB of storage, because that gives us more IOPS than a lower number. IOPS is IO per second. The engine is MariaDB, engine version 1067. You can always specify another version. The instance class, you can use micro if you want to use the free tier, 
otherwise small is a good choice. Identifier equals Maria DB. Name equals Maria DB. And then we can specify a username and password. The username can be root or anything that you would like. The password is just a random string. Just put the random string here that we are going to use in the demo, but you should create your own random password of course. DB subnet group name refers to the subnet group that we created earlier, and same with the parameter group name. Multi as is false, but you can set it to true to have high availability. If you have high availability, two instances will be synchronized with each other. You specify the VPC security group. Storage type equals GP2 general purpose. Backup retention periods. How long are you going to keep your backups? If you put 30, it is going to keep them for 30 days. And then, the availability zone, which is a preferred availability zone that you choose. Here we chose main private one. And we can give it a tag, so we have nice name when we open this in the AWS console. So guys let's launch this RDS resource, with Terraform. So as you can see, the files that I going to use, is from demo 10 folder. I have a new file rds.tf. In rds.tf file, I have my AWS DB subnet group that I explained to you in the theory. I have my AWS DB parameter group, and those two I refer in my AWS DB instance. I also change the password into a variable, so that you can specify your own RDS password. I am also going to run this in a VPC. I'm going to launch an instance. This instance has a key pair, so you will have to create my key, and my key pub, using the SSH Keegan. And we have also security groups. Here as you can see, I create two security groups, one security group I will attach to this instance. So this is the example instance security group. And this security group is going to allow SSH. Then allow MariaDB. It is going to allow port 3306. If the incoming IP address comes from an instance that has a security group example instance attached. So this example instance security group that is attached to this instance. So that is why this instance will be able to access port 3306, which is the MariaDB or MySQL port. So now, let's do Terraform apply. But I can pass the RDS password variable. So you just pass the key and the value. Key is RDS password. And value is going to be my random password, and then something. And as you can see, this is going to create a key pair, create a VPC, create subnets, the instances, security groups, and the RDS. So this can take some time. I'll just pause the video for now, and I'll show you the screen at the end. Apply complete, 19 resource created. But here you can see, it took more than 10 minutes. So, that is it for this lab. I hope I gave you a clear explanation about this. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below, I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.